Mirfield Village Golf Club in the gentle rolling hills northwest of Columbus and Dublin, Ohio. Always one of the favorite stops on the PGA Tour. A wonderful test as the greatest players in the world come to honor one of the legends of the game. Overcast skies at the moment. We've had over six inches of rain since since May 15th. Temperatures very pleasant. But the forecast mostly cloudy and there may be some rain coming this afternoon. Meanwhile out at the 10th 441 yard par four. This is Mark Brooks. He's leaning like he might have hit that a little bit left but not all bad. Bill McAtee and Peter Costas with you first round of the Memorial Tournament. As we go back to the play at the 10th and here's Paul Azinger's approach. Got a pitching wedge from 137 yards. Look out, Hall. Oh, yeah. oh. Well done by Paul Azinger. And how fitting would it be for Paul to be in contention on Sunday with his friend Payne Stewart, the honoree this year? Stewart Appleby from the Greenside Bunker at the 18th. He's got it to five under. If that had gone in, he would have had a share of the lead. Short putt upcoming for par for Appleby. One shot behind Chris Smith. And the reason I mentioned the lack of success for non winners on tour at this event is that Chris Smith, our leader, has never won on tour. Is playing here for the first time. 67 for Appleby. Well, in the entire history of the tournament, there have only been two non Americans to win Greg Norman and Vijay Singh. So there's a lot of peculiarities surrounding this tournament. To the 16th and David Faraday. And Curtis Strange with the best tee shot of the day here. And he knocks it in for two and goes to minus two. So the Ryder Cup captain. Playing beautifully here today. Yes, you are. <laughs> to the ninth. A dangerous par four downhill ninth. 407 yards. Dog leg little left to right. And the whole cut so close to the pond today. Scott Hoke one under par. Hope the winner in Greensboro playing with Robert Dameron who won the Baron Nelson and with Billy Mayfair who lost in the playoff at Hilton Head. Up ahead at 10. And Mark Brooks. This is going to be a very scary left to right slider for Mark Brooks. Most players commenting that these greens are in the fastest on tour this year. You can really see the speed here. And being ranked 139th in putting this year doesn't make that putt any easier, Charlie, does it? No, it doesn't, Peter. Mark's been all over the yard, the front nine, three birdies to go with two bogeys. Now what's Paul got left Charlie. Well Paul drove the ball so well here he was left with just a pitch and wedge was able to get it in here just three feet under the hole right straight uphill. Paul should be fresh he's come off of six weeks of home time and fishing <laughs> looking sharp today. By the way Scott Hope tapped in for his par to remain at one under five back and we go to Lanny Watkins at the 11th Lanny. Thank you Billy. Here's Justin Linden for birdie from about 40 feet. And bingo is Justin moves to one under two under. Let's go to the 12th hole. Last week's winner, Frank Licklider. There's a pitching wedge, Frank one over, but a magnificent shot here at the magnificent 12th. Well, leading by one, Chris Smith from Sluman and Appleby, and then Woods and Garcia in the pack that follows. Go over to 17. Andrew McGee plus three 
in over the left-hand bunker in a shallow area and very little green behind the cup. That is the best of the day. A number of players have played brilliant second shots and run into the back fringe and into the back bunker and been very disappointed. Back to 12. And we saw Frank Leiter's tee shot. And he sneaks it back to even par. We go to 17. Curtis Strange coming off that great birdie at 16. Very difficult pin placement of that par three. Slightly uphill, a little bit of right to left, and then it will straighten out. Peter, you know, we uh, former European rider cuppers uh, <laughs> watching Curtis play here. You have to wonder uh, as we go to 11. You have to wonder if Watkins there is going to get a pick, you know, <laughs> he's old one. Oh, thank he's, you. He's thank owed you. one by Curtis. Curtis, uh, one for 1995 at Oak Hill in Rochester. And Captain Lanny. Over here at 11 at Tim Heron for Eagle. Waiting to see what's going on at 12. <laughs> he's wondering if that applause is for him. And Tim taps in for four. Moves him to plus two. About time to get something going for Tim. Good golf course for Tim here, and he hits it very long, keeps the ball a long way. Should play well here. This putt for a bogey. David Frost was five under par through 13 holes. Has made two bogeys. In fact, three bogeys in succession. This to avoid four successive bogeys. No, well done. It was threatening lead, just one behind Chris Smith, who's finished six under. Bogey, 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 par, and the tough 18th to come. Go on, you can have it. It's not mine. Great. He needs a break after the last four holes. Save some energy for the uphill second shot at number 18. Who says uh, walking isn't a part of golf? <laughs> Back to number 12. Well, we saw Tim Heron's reaction to some enormous cheering just a moment ago. Hal Sutton, one over. Up to it, ready? Uh, let's make that one under. Hole in one at the beautiful 12th. That with a nine iron. And there aren't too many of those in a half dozen. David, that really helps the chipping stats. <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> Back to 11. And Jack Nicholas looks like he's laying up here. And he just got a full iron over 300 yards to the hole. He just wants to chase this up there where he can get at the hole with a wedge for his third. Here again by hitting three where Jack didn't put himself past the corner. He looks like he's really got to turn this shot right to left, Charlie. Yeah, he's got to turn it over a little bit. That's going to be in left center. Nice play. Good, good shot right down the center. And let's go to 12. Al Sutton. And on the walk up. And a beautiful walk it is around the pond here. This hole modeled on the 12th at Augusta, but it plays very differently. The slope at the back. And you're right, Lenny. You know, that does it. Uh, it takes away the need for that troublesome chipping. Well, it's a tough green if you miss it. It, you know, it requires a lot of imagination to get it up and down if you miss this hole. And, um, Hal took care of it the best way possible. Par 72, over 7,200 yards. Chris Smith in the first group today, 66. Field Village Golf Club opened 27 years ago with an exhibition match between Jack Nicholas and Tom Weisskopf. The first memorial tournament was played in 1976, and since that time it has stood as one of the great tests on tour 
as the best players in the game come to Dublin, Ohio, to honor one of the game's legends, Jack Nicklaus. And as Bill mentioned, weather has been the dominant factor today. Heavy rains last night and this morning caused a delay of about two hours, but play has resumed. So once again, the second round is underway. Tiger Woods yesterday went 38 and in in 30. And here he is at the second for birdie to get to five under. Tiger started with two pars yesterday before running into trouble on the third. We go to the 14th now, and Paul Azinger. 109 yards out of the long rough. Now well, there you see the condition of the golf course, how the rains have changed the texture of the greens, even out of the rough, able to stop that shot. To 15. And we've got Grant Waite playing his third shot from 198 yards. Drove it in trouble off the tee, pitched out to here. Very difficult shot playing off a downhill lie. Greens above him. And he gets it in the left front bunker and has a very long, difficult bunker shot from there. Let's go to 14. Jack now for birdie. Let me get back to that projected cut line at plus two. Well, you see evidence of the winds that we have now once that storm blew through. Jack very meticulous in his preparation to hit every single golf shot in his career. I don't think anybody drew the club back better prepared for success than Jack Nicklaus. If he wasn't comfortable if he wasn't didn't feel right he didn't swing. Peter, if I had done that, I never would have finished. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, those who hit more shots should take less time, right, David? I guess. And Jack, a little discouraged by that effort. Sergio Garcia now at the third. Just a little wedge, and he can put some spin on the golf ball. That from 117 yards, nestles down nicely. Sergio has that left for birdie. So flag straight out. We go back to the 14th. You know, thinking about Sergio's victory a couple of weeks ago, do you, do you agree that that winning breeds more success, and that for Sergio, having gotten that first one under his belt, that uh, he may be a real force? Everybody's looking for that 15th club in their bag, Billy, which is confidence, and and winning breeds confidence like nothing else. Hazinger has a chance to share the lead. And you know deep down inside this week is dedicated to his good friend Payne Stewart and Zinger you know would love to win this tournament and dedicate the victory to Payne. Azinger and Smith are leaders at minus six. Back at the fifth. The par five fifth, 527 yards, the first of the four par fives at Muirfield Village. Fred Couples. Back left pin place from this green, completely rebuilt, redesigned since last year. Angles away to the left, the water more in play across the front of the green, as you can see. To the last of the par fives, the 15th. And Jack Nicholas with 248 yards to the hole is laying up. Good shot by Jack. He just can't put that water in play on the second shot. Probably have 110 yards from there. Needs to make a birdie or two. And Paul Azinger from 224 yards in the right side of the fairway with a shot that really suits his eye. Paul likes to work the ball from left to right. It's his natural shot. And he's got a very deep face looking club there. 
I believe that's a driver, lady. It, it looks like it. Now I'm sure he's going to take it to the left side of the green and just let it cut in. And that's a wonderful play. That ball was hammered, and it, that shot just really suited A. Zinger's eye. I'm not surprised he put it right where he did. And the 17th playing downwind today, 437. In for the first round, tucked behind the left hand bunker. Today, all the way back a little bit to the right of center. Just 143 yards. But a very strong wind whipping the flag. And John Cook, also has played here numerous times, grew up in the Columbus area. Misjudging the wind. Back to 15. Jack Nicholas from 95 yards. Looks like he made a pretty good swing, just didn't quite get there. Now he's got a very difficult up and down to save par. And let's go over to 16. And the ailing Grant Waite. Now at minus four. And it's astonishing the speed of these greens. It's, I don't think it's a half a foot slower than it was yesterday when we had the dry conditions. Back at the fourth. Well, David Tigers pulled a six iron and he's going to have to smoke it to get it to this hole. So that follow through off the ball to the left. Trying to, and that one right over the flag. Boy, did he smoke it? I guess so. So Tiger Woods, three shots behind in the chase for his third Memorial Tournament in a row. And Paul Lazinger from 30 feet for Eagle to take a nice two shot lead in this event. Ball starts a little bit left and should work back to the right. Great speed. Good effort from Paul. It's a putt he wanted to make, but he sure didn't want to let it get away from him. Well played hole. Takes him to seven under and is now our tournament leader. Looks very comfortable playing for a man that hasn't been on tour for about four or five weeks. Well, darkening skies above the Mirfield Village Golf Club. Second round of the Memorial. We've already had a two hour weather delay today. And that's the story. Paul Azinger, three under today, and our leader by one. And with the darkening skies, Billy, and the two hour delay, as you mentioned, be highly doubtful they finish today's play. We'll have to come back out early in the morning. Let's go to 16. And with the cut moving towards plus three, this would help Jack Nicholas. At home is overrated. Jack will stay at plus four. Two holes to play. And he knows that one birdie will do it. Earlier over at the fourth hole, Duffy, ooh, a bit of a lurch at that one. Beautifully lurched, in fact. The sand is very compacted, very wet in places. Duffy managed that beautifully. And Sergio with a realistic uh, attempt here. Some 20 feet up the hill, left to right for birdie. Brings such a, a freshness to the game and enthusiasm. It's a game that can drive you nuts. You know, most of the people that play this game look like they're not really enjoying themselves a lot of the time. Is that your story, David? Golf That's did it to you? my story, yeah. No question. That about five or six feet outside the left. 
And it's coming back towards him at that stage. A huge swing on these on some of these greens. Not a lot of pitch in them, but they're so fast that they, they just take every possible break there is and they'll exaggerate it on you. At 16 now, Paul Azinger with his tail up. A shot in front. And make it two. What a story this would be. And right now it's Paul Azinger with a two shot lead. Once again, weather has been a factor here. We had to tidy up the completion of the second round earlier this morning. There were three players who were unable to finish their second round yesterday, but they did so earlier, and the cut was made at plus three, and exactly 70 players on the number made it into the final two rounds. Here's how they stand. What a majestic leaderboard we have. Paul Azinger, the 1993 winner here, Leads the 97 champion, BJ Singh by one. And then two time defending champion, Tiger Woods at seven under with Sergio Garcia, who will be playing with Woods today, and Chris Smith at seven under. Well, let's go over to the second. And we're going to see Brad Faxon try to escape from some trouble. This is third to the par four. So we'll see perhaps if Faxon can display some of his putting magic. And hold par. Downhill par four, playing downwind today. And these fairways are generous, will even be more so with the moist conditions out here. But if you miss them, you will pay the price. Back to one. And Daly out of the bunker at one. Sand wet and firm, so the chance to get some spin and well controlled. John's not really performed well here in eight previous tries. His best finish, 71st. Let's go to 12. That's Jesper Parnovic. Four, two, yeah! Jesper, here we go. As you can see, the palm starting to get pelted by the rain. Oh, no, not again. He's now two under par looking skyward. Want to get that brim down, maybe, huh? Get the brim down. We'll keep it out. Brim is not coming down. And now uh, Tiger Woods, as you can see, that rain starting to come down. Mm -hmm. This golf course, if it gets any, any water, like the water coming down right now, they're just, just about ready to shut it down because there is nowhere for the water to go. We probably had six inches of rain here in the last week. They've been pelted recently. Right, let's go to number two. And Brad Faxon. Playing alongside Mark Kalkovecki and Stuart Sink in this threesome. Been a long day for these guys. Most of them have been to the course since 10 or so this morning. Thinking they're going to get going. And now here we are. Quarter of four. And they're just getting started. But Faxon's one of those kind of guys who he can take those kind of things. Take it in stride. Well executed putt, but it'll be a bogey for Faxon. Wrapping him back to two under par. One over for his round. Yeah, there's Tiger on the driving range. Little rain won't bother him at all. That's discipline for you. How about Tiger Woods in the state of Ohio? Nine times he's played in this state with four wins, including back to back memorials and back to back NEC invitationals. That's a little more than pocket change.
Paul Azinger, final round, first hole, looking for birdie at Muirfield Village Golf Club. He is the leader in the final round by one. What an emotional journey it will be today for Azinger. Welcome friends, there is a special texture to this leaderboard here and chase for the title. Paul Azer, Azinger angling for a win, riding the inspiration he no doubt feels with Payne Stewart, the honoree to this year's tournament. As our old colleagues Jack Whitaker and Ken Venturi have often said, will fate have a way of bending a twig and fashioning a man to his better instincts? And then there is the Tiger angle, again with his uh, dance with history, another one perhaps for the record books today. He's trying to win this tournament for a third straight year. The last player to win a tour event three straight years, Tom Watson, 1978-79-80 at Byron Nelson. Get you up to speed what happened late yesterday. Peter Osterhaus alongside the fifth hole, Tiger Woods to the par five and two. It was a very difficult day, multiple delays, players practicing, warming up, ready to go, then a stoppage. But Tiger, a fantastic second shot into the par five, fifth. He hit it six feet away in the second round, missed the eagle putt. He'd made two eagles in the first round after shooting 38 on the first nine. The putt for eagle, wayward, but he would make birdie there. Again, yesterday, a day of many delays. They were not able to complete the third round until this morning. But this is last night, and Robert Allenby had an eagle earlier in the round at the fifth, and look at that. He had two eagles, five birdies, but managed to just shoot two under par 70. Sergio Garcia. This is near 8 o'clock in the evening at the 12th. Just gets it over the front bank. What a great finish he had last night, battling darkness. This is the birdie putt at 12. You bet. And look at this right here, the 13th hole. Or another one. The stroke looking just beautiful. Garcia would finish this morning, round of 70. In at minus nine. Azinger last night. Also at 13. So play was called before, just before nine o'clock local time. In the evening, back out at 8.30 this morning, and Tiger this morning for birdie at 17. A very slippery spot on the front of the green. He's birdied the 17th all three rounds. Three rounds under 70 here for Tiger. 11 under through 54 holes. Nine iron for Azinger this morning at the 17th. Laser-like is how he's described his arm play this week and this a fantastic shot. And the stab for birdie to give Azinger the lead by one through three rounds. And this is how they stand at this point. Azinger with that birdie at one. He is at 13 under. Tiger birdied the second to get to 12. Then Appleby and Garcia at nine. VJ just failed to birdie the par five fifth. He's at eight with Allenby. Sink has given up a shot. He's at seven. Weight and Funk. Taniguchi and Flesh all at minus six. A very small, shallow target from way back here, Lanny. He's got probably the three wood, David. Or yes. the, he, he carries a seven wood also. Now this is the three wood. That one is heading left of the flag. He did not get all of that one. No, that's, that's an awfully aggressive play for Paul, leading here by one. As good a wedge player and short iron player as he is, and uh, you, you think his miss would have been to the right there. Yeah, you'd expect that, you know, his left or right flight. He really should have been easily able to carry that, at least, you know, make his mistake long or right. With as far as these guys hit the ball. Yeah, and if he misses it to the right, he's got plenty of green to chip to today. I mean, it's not like he would have been, you know, blocked out by the bunker or 
you know, had any significant problems over there too. This is a mistake that he really didn't need to make right now. Well, Lamp will be just a couple of yards closer to the hole. 245. He also has three wood. This shot probably suits Stewart's eye, being a person who draws the ball as opposed to Paul's. Stewart should probably be aiming this at that back right bunker and then just letting it rip. Up one low, just right of the hole. Great shot. Beautiful shot, right at that back right bunker, and he's got himself about 30 feet for eagle. Well, Tiger placing the ball here, going to give himself a perfect lie, obviously. And this is three iron from 240 yards. No, it's not. <laughs> you can't do that. <laughs> I know. <laughs> That's horrible, isn't oh, it? Oh, my goodness. And I guess it's probably not going to be real low either, is it, David? I don't think so. He has had more incredible shots into par fives this week. Oh, he's made some beautiful swings in this hole. Hoisted way in the air. That's another one. My goodness, Tiger Woods with three iron from over 240 yards to six feet. Tiger Woods about ready to tie or pass Paul Azinger here at the Memorial. Taking his sweater off, getting really ready to roll. David, what is Paul doing with his drop? Looks like he's dropping awfully close. Yeah, he's dropping it 50 yards short of the hole here and has only a bud. Nine or ten feet of green to work with here, short of the flag. And this, you know, potential three-shot swing here. This could get nasty early. This is a shot Paul really needs to stick close and uh, here again, maybe giving him himself a tougher shot. And he struck it nicely. Uh, beautifully played. Paul's Paul's sometimes just a magician with his short clubs. Well, last bogey was the fifth hole yesterday, so he needs to make this one and no more if he's going to take care of Tiger today. Stuart Appleby for Eagle. And Stuart can get himself right in the game if he can roll one in here. Off a pretty good second shot himself. A little harder to go at this green with a three wood. Well, I think that's what you've got to do with a three wood, though. You've got to fire at the right side of that green. Your mistake has to be right or long. Uh, particularly with that pin location. Now, if the pin's back left, that's another story entirely. Four for Stuart Appleby. And he moves to 11 under par. Lanny, how much do you think that Azinger, who was the first to hit the second shot into the green here, or attempt to, knowing that Tiger was going to hit one of those majestic, soaring long iron shots, how much do you think that influenced his strategy with his misfire I really don't know that it that it did uh, I mean Paul is a very aggressive player in his own right I mean he doesn't back off from anybody I mean he won the PGA beating Greg Norman in a playoff he stood toe to toe with Seve Ballesteros and stared him down in Ryder Cups and uh, I just don't think that you know as great a player as Tiger is I don't think that Paul's going to be in, intimidated by Tiger I think he's going to be impressed with what he's going to see but he's not going to be intimidated. Uh, Paul's won enough in his own right and is confident enough in his own ability that I think he's going to try and play his game the best he can today. And David, how important is this putt? This one really has to go, doesn't it? Yeah, it really does with Tiger in there tight and a great chance for Eagle. And this one is very quick, not a lot of movement to it. Uh, that's a weak effort by Paul. Not what we've seen the last couple of days, the way he's been putting. And a very disappointing six at a hole he probably feels he should have made four at. Bad mistake there. And of course, the, the mistake's about to be amplified if Tiger makes this. Six feet for Eagle. David, what's this going to do? It's not going to do much, Lanny. It may move a little bit to his left, but he doesn't want to get it. Outside the hole. He's actually missed a couple of these this week already. He for missed Eagle. A, yes, he missed one here yesterday. Yeah. 
Tiger Woods makes eagle three at the par five fifth and goes to 14 under par and immediately has a two shot lead over Paul Azinger. Talk about a serious swing in events. And uh, Sergio Garcia, Peter Costas, this is four shot. And this is he's playing the hole the same way Scott did. He hit a seven iron, uh, misjudged the win, bounced it over the green. Just to save par. And he is going to go begging now with a bogey, dropping farther and farther from the lead. And believe me, these guys back in the fairway will we'll be watching. They're, they're watching the chaos up there and they know the tendencies. And everybody has the same tendencies. Okay, why are these guys going over the green? There's a little wind up there coming with me. Hmm, maybe I better take a little off this club. I don't want to make that mistake. Tiger's looking up, trying to find the win. Always watch the guys in front of you. We'll all make the same mistakes. Always have a tendency to. We kind of see the same things. Let the let the guy out on point make the mistakes and just be aware. Okay, we got Stuart Sink playing this hole pretty good. Peter, this is for Birdie. Yeah, he had 183 yards left in, hit a six iron, got his distance just right. Everybody was talking about the wind coming back into him in this hole. I just didn't feel it from the fairway. I thought it was maybe from the side or even helping a little bit. Well, you can see where he's playing this one. He's playing way out here to the right. Is it too easy? It looks like it's too easy. No, beautiful. You can see the speed. These things are running about 11, 11 and a half on the stint meter, which is kind of marble. It's kind of marble with a little sandpaper on it. It's Gary, this is polished marble, by the way. Real shiny. Yeah. Sergio Garcia, two bogeys in a row. He goes to six under par. Well, it's going to be tough to him to go searching on this pin. You think this can be long right. And that is long right. And that, as Peter Costa said a second ago, is just about impossible down that hill. So he just compounded a mistake on the par five, getting a little greedy, try to play it safe here and play too safe. This game will drive you nuts. This hole's changed quite a bit. David Fair, they had a big old tree on the right hand side up up here by the green that used to be a center fielder and used to catch a lot of balls. They took that out and then made more green back around to the left for a more diabolical pin placement where this uh, pin is today. Hard to get to it. It pretty much looks like the flag is in the water from where these players are. Appleby with six on it. And it's such an advantage, David Faraday, when Tiger can, like in that last hole, he hits a, hits a three iron from 240 and the ball went forward about 18 inches. He can hit it straight up in the air. A Jack Nicholas golf course, that's what you want. 176 yards for Appleby. Got a light six here. He's going to hit a nuke seven. No, this is six iron, and uh, the wind does feel a little into their faces. Very good golf swing by Stuart Appleby. Sets up square. Good positions. This one's all over the flag. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Read that one nicely. Hit it about five feet away. Well, Tiger Eagles the last, uh, takes the lead. Very dangerous flag here. Your normal person wouldn't really want to go with this flag, would they? Yeah, right. No, you just make four here and you run to the next. Yeah, two. right. What's he got? He's got 170 yards. This is seven iron. Got to choke down here a little bit, David. So he's trying to try to hook some kind of little hook in here. Not real hard to swing. Is it turning? Yeah, it looks a little long. Just right. a very little long. Right over the top of the flagstick, about 12, 13 feet away. Tiger Woods coming out of the box strong. He's got a two shot lead. Look at today's scores here. Tiger working on 67. He'll probably be lower than that with a five par straight ahead. Sergio, two under, but could be giving back one at the 
16th. Appleby with a quad is two over for the day. Lee Jansen, good round, 67. Couples low score, 65. And how about John Daly? His 69 puts him in a tie for 20th right now. Jack, you've been eyeing John Daly's improved play this year. I think John Daly's uh, much more at peace with himself. I think he's doing fine. I'm pleased for him. He's a, you know, he's got an awful lot of talent, and he seems to be handling it pretty well. I think it's great. Somewhere back there, the Sergio hacking him. There he is. Peter Costas, you were down there lurking over that ball. Has he got anything at all? Uh, not much. He's got a gnarly bunch of grass behind the ball, and uh, he can make contact, but if he tries to hit this close, he could leave it in the fringe short or could run it all the way down the lower level. Oh, or he could hold it. Never forget that one. That ball just about, just about pitched into the hole. Sergio will have him about 10, 11 feet there for his birdie or par. Oh, uh -oh. I think he's swinging it the wrong way. Laney. David Faraday, what's uh, happening back here with these boys? Well, I don't know. Azinger hit the trees on the right. Uh, Appleby underneath the little red maple here. He may be playing. It's right around the roots as well. And he's going to have a very long third shot no matter what happens here. Just wants to get this back on the fairway where he can get, get to the green with his third shot. And he wants to get it back on the fairway and he wants to keep it on the flat as well. Lenny, you really don't want to be going at this green with your third shot from a, the severe down slope here. Okay, well, that will not be a severe downslope. And it'll be about 240 yards from the flag. David, I want you to think about some of these shots he's attempted on this second side in a, in a, in a three or four hole stretch. Yeah, it's kind of like uh, the where's the windmill? <laughs> Taniguchi, Toro Taniguchi, semi finalist in world match play this year. At 18. Right to left putt. For a birdie. And Tanaguchi, second on the Japanese tour, but decided at the end of 2000 to try and go through the qualifying tournament to get on the US tour. A number of Japanese players attacking the PGA tour. Hell, the putt coming back for 69. Let's go to 15. And Tiger Woods from 240 yards. With a two iron, didn't take a divot. That's in the stratosphere, and it is right over the flag. Well, another boring two iron by Tiger. Just never left the flag. Unbelievable. Tiger is minus 50 in his last 212 holes at the Memorial. Tiger Woods leading by five, about to extend that lead, just playing out of his mind. It's a pleasure to watch. Well, this would be a mildly amusing three for Sergio. Back in the trees, bad lie. Flopped it straight up in the air, rolled right by the hole. Mm -hmm. We thought it was just going to crank left there at the end. He goes back to 10 under. Six shots back. But still in second place. Muttering in Spanish. Which you can't get fined that way. This was Scott Hoke earlier. Watch this. You figure if it took that much time, why didn't it go in? Let's go to 15. And Paul Azing, his third shot from 150 yards, taking a sirloin steak for a divot. And look at the spin on this one. Great shot by Paul. And earlier, Stuart Appleby with his third shot. From about 240 yards. Just over the back right edge. Not too bad from there. Still looks awfully focused. Not quite as, in, as much in 
intensity in those eyes as I was seeing earlier, but uh, he's having fun, and I wouldn't be surprised if he just pours this right in. sure trying he got it just a little high not too hard great speed you're gonna just gonna walk up and tap in a real tough birdie oh, 17 under look what he's doing on the par fives this week 14 under par on the par fives this week let's go to 18 and VJ tormented by the putter this weekend for birdie not this time is he tormented that's Good for a round of 71. The round slipped away in the middle portion here, Peter. We really thought when he made the brilliant eagle at number seven that he was going to be a threat, but then poor play on the next three holes. And now this testy little five, five and a half footer for par. When the greens are rolling, Jack Nicholas said almost 15 on the stint meter. Really got to control the pace and the steadiness of your stroke. Good roll. And over to 17. In the familiar style of Steve Williams and Tiger Woods. David. Well, he's all the way back there for a change. You know, he's first to hit 187 yards. And again, a flag all the way over in the left corner. Looks hard to get at. He has seven iron, though. And again, as Tiger will be able to do, Jack Nicholas, this is something you taught me back when I was 16 years old. When you play to a hole that's cut in the corner of the green, always start the ball at the middle of the green and work it toward the flag. That's what I always try to do, Bobby. I don't, I'm not sure. That uh, anymore that that's the best way. I'm not sure you just don't take it right at it anymore. Well, when you're swinging as well as Tiger is right now, why not? Yeah, I suppose that's right. That was just a tired swing from a young lad who started at 8.30 this morning. Get in the clouds, Ralph! About a fourth straight birdie on 17. Arthur! It was nothing but center cut. Just needed one more revolution and a wry smile. Sergio was hoping for a whole lot more, but uh, give him credit for coming back after the mistakes at five and six. And uh, unless Azinger makes birdie here, he'll have a share of second. For the third straight year, the victory walk in Columbus, Ohio for Tiger Woods. An area that certainly recognizes great talent, having produced you know, a player that some will still tell you is the greatest player of all time, Jack Nicholas. And that it will be the debate until. Tiger 
Gets to that 18th professional major conquest if that ever happens. This to match Greg Norman's round for lowest final round score by a champion at this tournament, 66. <laughs> Tiger times three. The first player in 21 years on the PGA Tour to win an event three successive years.